Today I'm going to give away a free t-shirt, ask and answer a question, bring you comics news, and reveal the books I bought this week. How y'all doing? I'm Victor, and you are watching a Comic Hero Show. Now kick that intro! installment. It's been a tradition on the show since I started doing it in 2019 and I'm very excited about this one. Now I'm kicking things off with a bang by showing some love to the original hero for hire, Luke Cage. Now Luke Cage was created by Archie Goodwin, uh, George Tuska, Roy Thomas, and John Romita Sr. and he is the first black superhero to make his debut in its own monthly series. That has never happened before. Um, Black Panther, who was the first black superhero, period, debuted in Fantastic Four number 52 in 1966. And then Sam Wilson debuted an issue of Captain America three years later. And um, so this was a very groundbreaking thing. Luke made his debut in Luke Cage Hero for Hire number one in June of 1972. So with that being said, this is also the character's 50th anniversary. Now, um, a lot of folks know Luke Cage from the... Um, for both the TV shows Marvel's Jessica Jones, um, and then his own TV show called Luke Cage, and then the, the, the series that only lasted one season, The Defenders, all that were all on Netflix, but now are on Disney Plus. And the character, and they, and Mike Coulter played that character, and he played that character to perfection. Now this is a Luke Cage comic hero tee, and if you would like your very own, you can find them on my website, iamthecomichero.com, for twenty dollars. I'm all, and because, as I said on last week's episode, because this is Juneteenth month, every superhero featured in, uh, in the month of June are all black superheroes. And next week will be Storm, and then the week after that, Black Panther. All right, it's time to give away a free t-shirt. All right, last week's episode, I asked... What is the name of the comic book series from Marvel that focuses on events that might have happened if a few key moments in history turned out differently? Well, the correct answer is what if. And seven people have answered correctly, and because they've answered correctly, their names have been entered in a drawing for a free tea. And that drawing takes place right now. So the winner of the free tea for this week's episode of the show is... Ashley Richard from Winfield, Louisiana. So congratulations, Ashley. We will have a free comic for tea. All right, here's the question for next week's episode, and this is a DC question. Which DC character has an IQ that's higher than Albert Einstein? Now here's the hints. The first hint is that this character made his debut in Detective Comics number 27 in 1939. And then the second hint, Adam West, Michael Keaton, Kevin Conroy, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, Christian Bale, Will Arnett and Robert Pattinson have all voiced or played this or physically played this character on the big and small screens. That's the dead giveaway. If you don't know that one, sorry. Everyone who answers correctly will be entered in the drawing for a free tea on next week's episode of the show. So I gotta ask. Any questions? Questions are all All right, I only have one question for this week, and it's from Brian Ferguson from Minden, Louisiana. He asked, what character would you eliminate completely, and why? Well, Brian, here's the thing. There are a lot of characters that I like, and there are some that I really don't care for. One of them that I really don't care for is the character Mimic. Now, Mimic, 
um, has one of the worst origin stories. It also, he's one of the worst characters ever. Now Mimic, he's actually a good, he's actually on the side of good, but he was one of the um, very rare members of the X-Men who was not a mutant. Mimic ended up getting his powers after inhaling some gas in his dad's laboratory, and those powers enabled him to mimic any ability from any mutant. And he was so bad at it to the point where he tried to mimic Angel and he couldn't get rid of the wings. He just couldn't do it. And um, then he had one, he had some of the worst costumes ever. Now, by the way, um, Mimic's real name is Calvin Rankin. And um, I really don't care for him. Now, they tried to make him a, a, a villain in the... Um, in a miniseries that came out in 2010 called Dark X-Men. And he was and he was by far, it was where Norman Osborn had decided to uh, to start his own, uh, his own twisted versions of, of the X-Men. And let me tell you, it was, it was by far the worst. There was a, I mean, the only good thing that came out of it was the artwork by my friend Roland Paris, who, by the way, did the inks to them. Other than that, mm, not so much. But Mimic, no, it, there, there's really, I mean, it, I mean, it's one thing to have powers, to have the powers to mimic just about anyone, but if you only have the powers to mimic mutants, and you're not even a mutant yourself, how dumb is that? All right, folks, I really love these questions that y'all are sending me. Y'all keep them coming. I, um, I have a few, a few more questions for uh, the next month and a half, but I'll definitely accept more. All right, now it's time for Conkly Speaking, so without further ado, let's talk comics! All right, I only have two things that I'm going to talk about in this segment of Conkly Speaking, and one is Marvel and the other is DC. Now, here's the Marvel. Now, yesterday, I just got around to watching the very first episode of Ms. Marvel, and I was not disappointed. That... I mean, whoever wrote, directed, and, and produced um, everything, they, they were totally on spot. Now, it's a, now, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, her origin is a little different than it is in the comics. In the comics, um, Kamala Khan, who is Ms. Marvel's real name, she, okay, first off, she was one of the humans that, was, um, that carried the, um, the inhuman gene. And the only way that gene was unlocked was by uh, getting a whiff of, of this of this stuff called the Terrigen Mist, and then that's how she became a human, uh, became an inhuman. And her powers were um, were elasticity and um, and size alteration. On this one, it's a, it's a little different. I mean, I um, I'm not going to try to give away what what her powers are because after all, you know. The show just premiered yesterday on Disney Plus, and I don't want to um, don't want to spoil it for anyone. But Iman Vellani did such a wonderful job in that very first episode, and I'm and I'm looking forward to to seeing more of her in the weeks to come. And here's the awesome thing about this, folks: she is only 20 years old, and this is her first ever acting gig. Now. What gave her a leg up was the fact that she was already a, a fan of the of the comic book Ms. Marvel and also just about anything Marvel. I mean that's that's what happens when when you uh, when you have a passion and you and, and, and you and you and you stand by it because when you have a passion you stand by it someone's going to notice you and they're going and, and they're going to celebrate you. So if you have a passion, if there's something that you have uh, that you have a love for, don't let anyone tell you differently. Stand by your convictions because one day you will get recognized in a positive way. All right, here's the second thing. Now, I just read Justice League number 75. This is the DC thing. Um, it it said on the very front cover the death of the death of the Justice League, and they weren't lying. Um, Pariah. Now, what happened was that all the the characters from all the members of the Justice League ended up being teleported from whatever they were doing, and they end up 
at the um, the headquarters of the Justice League um, incarnate, and they had said that Pariah is 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 uh, wreaking all kinds of havoc, and they need their help. Well, Pariah ended up getting all these all these villains. Some of the villains that the these that, that some of the members of the Justice League have fought individually, and they killed each and every one of them. Although Pariah ended up killing super just just killing Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman by himself. And the only one that survived that uh, that uh, that assault was Black Adam. And he crash landed right outside the Hall of Justice. And they and the, in the last page he said the Justice League is dead. And that sets uh, that sets the, the tone for this upcoming um, mini series that's uh, that that's coming out. It's actually coming out uh, came out yesterday, but I'm going to go buy it tomorrow. It's called Dark Crisis, and um, it's where they it's where all the other DC superheroes you know they form they band together and they try to get um, revenge on Pariah. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, some of some of the characters that are going to be in it is the the John Kent Superboy, I mean Superman, um, the Damian Wayne Robin, uh, the Hal Jordan Green Lantern, the Barry Allen Flash, uh, Wonder Girl, who's um, the new Wonder Girl, Yara Floor, and then uh, the Jace Fox Batman, just to name a few. And really looking forward to this. Um, and now here's the thing: DC did this in celebration, or in observance rather, of the 30th anniversary of the death of Superman. Now, I didn't really approve of this, but I think there's something. I think there's a lot more to what DC, than DC is telling us, and I can't wait to find out. But anyway, um, Justice League number 75. I I don't think I'm ever going to read that book again. I mean, heck, I haven't even. Read uh, a Millennium Edition copy of Superman number 75, and I read that one time. I said, "Nope, I'm not reading this again." So that, the same goes for Justice League number 75. I don't like to see characters like uh, characters as iconic as them die, even though it's, you know the comic book world. You know, who's to say they stay dead? All right, that's it for comically speaking. But let's get to the comics I bought this week. Comic books I bought this week. Alright, first up is Action Comics number 1043. Action Comics uh, 2022 Annual. The Amazing Spider-Man number 2. Aquaman number four. The Avengers number fifty six. Really love this book right here. Avengers Forever number six. Batman 2022 Annual. Black Panther number six. Captain Marvel number 38. Detective Comics number 1060. Hulk number 7. Hulk 
Knights of Ace number two. Legion of X number one. Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 38. Sorry, Donnie. Radiant Red, number three. Robin, number 14. Savage Spider-Man number three. Strange number three. Teen Titans Academy, number 15. And finally, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number 129. All right, that's 20, which brings the total number of comics that I've watched since December of 1997 to 11,390. episode and here's a question again for a free tea for next week's episode of the show which dc character has an iq that's higher than albert einstein now here's the hints again the first hint is that this character made their debut in detective comics number 27 in 1939 and the second hint um adam west michael keaton kevin conroy val kilmer george clooney um I slipped my mind. Oh, yeah, Christian Bale, Will Arnett, and Robert Pattinson. Oh, and, um, you know, I, I, I failed to mention this. Ben Affleck all played this character on the big and small screens, whether it was physical or by voice. Everyone who answers correctly will be entered in the drawing for a free tea on next week's episode of the show. And congratulations to Ashley Richard from Winfield, Louisiana, won a free tea on this week's episode. All right, here's the road ahead for the show. On next week's episode, which is episode 406, I'm going to show some love to one of my favorite mutants, one of my favorite members of the X-Men, one of my favorite comic book characters, Storm. And then on episode 407, I'm going to show some love to the first black superhero in comics, Black Panther. And then on episode 408, I'm going to show some love to both the Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson Captain Americans. Oh, by the way, they have both of them are Captain America, and they both have their own books. Can't wait to read uh, both of them. All right, um, for those of y'all who are watching for the very first time, welcome, and as soon as this episode is over, go ahead and hit subscribe, um, and, and if you, uh, see any, and if, and if y'all have anything, any suggestions y'all want to make for the show, anything y'all think that would make the show better, please let me know, I mean, yeah, this might be my show, but the input of others never falls upon deaf ears with me, unless it is anything tasteless, or negative, or very ugly, then I, w I will not listen. You know, because, you know, we just need to be kind. It shouldn't cost us a, uh, even a red cent to be nice. It shouldn't. I mean, th just like the slogan at the Lake Bethlehem Baptist Church of Shreveport, Louisiana, it pays to be nice, and it really does. All right, I'm Victor Nelly on a comic here. I'll see you next week for episode 406. So until then, be safe, be blessed, be a hero and sweet Christmas. <laughs>